Now, here's another question that I, I ask people. Where does your money go? How much do you spend on taxes or entertainment and so on? It's funny. Most people don't know. It's really interesting. Here's a study that was done by one of the major financial firms. It shows that the average American spends 20% of what they make every month on debt. Now, debt includes the oil debt, mortgage debt, education loans, car loans, personal loans. I'm talking everything. And I've seen this number. I'm sure some of you have this number. That's substantially more than that 20%. This is an average. In, a day, you know, in addition, if you go on the web, you'll notice there's a day called Taxpayer Freedom Day, which is the day that the average person on this line has to work to to pay off their federal, state, and social security taxes. I'm not even counting excise and estate tax and things like that. Just federal, state, and social security. You know what day that is? Somebody at one of my seminars thought it was December 28th. It's actually uh, April 17th. Well, if you go from January to April 17th and divide by 365, that means that the average person on this line is paying 33% in taxes. And let me assure you, it can be, especially this year, it can be a lot more than this. Depending on your income and depending on the state you're in, it can be as high as 53%, seriously. But the average person pays 33. Well, if 33 is average on taxes and 20% goes out on every paycheck on debt, well, that leaves you 47% for everything else. Now, what's everything else? Things like insurance, repairs, food, clothing, retirement, education for your family. So if you wonder why you can't get ahead, this is the reason. My uncle was a principal in a private school. He didn't make enough, so he, he, moonlight, he did some moonlighting, and he became a principal, in a, pub, well, was a principal in a public school, and he did some moonlighting as a principal in a private school. So he had two jobs. He was working 70-hour weeks, and he died penniless. This is the reason, because they didn't take advantage of the good tax laws. A, he wasn't self-employed, and if he was, he didn't know the rules. He didn't know what was available to him, which is just as bad. Here's another interesting, shocking thing. Who do you think are the biggest tax cheats in North America? Here's the surprising answer. Business owners themselves cheat themselves out of over an estimated $100 billion, That's with a B. Billion dollars a year because they didn't know how simple and easy it is to reduce the taxes in, in literally less than two minutes a day. And that includes the knowledge and everything, which is very strange. In fact, based on some study, small business owners overpay their taxes to the tune of about $150 billion. That's with a B billion dollars a year. Even the general accounting office says people are overpaying their taxes. And based on the seminars that I do around the country, and I've done many seminars, I estimate that well over 95% of these people didn't think they overpay. Now, why is that? Well, there's two reasons. One, they didn't know. I mean, you don't know what you don't know. That, that's always been a problem. And the second reason is procrastination. You know, if you don't have something triggering you to do the things you need to do, whether it be for the mileage or entertainment or the things you need to do, if you don't have something like an alarm clock, you know, waking you up, what happens? You don't do it. And if you don't do it, you lose the deduction. Isn't that what happens? And that's those, those are the important points. Now, there's a couple of cash drain myths that I want to cover as well. The first one is only seven words long, and yet it costs more people to, and to lose money than probably any single financial mistake I promise you'll ever make. And those seven words are, my accountant takes care of my taxes. I have a similar myth. My spouse takes care of my taxes. If you learn anything, learn this. I equate this with a doctor taking care of our body. Wouldn't it be great if we can eat all the cholesterol and all the fattening foods, and once a year we go to a doctor's office and get one of these rotor rooter jobs? My point is doctors are important. Accountants are important, and I think everyone should have one. But if you don't know what to tell your accountant, if you don't have the right documentation, if you didn't do some tax planning, there's not much they can do for you by December 31st. That's the problem. Now, here's another interesting myth. I, some of you may have seen me. I was in a number of arenas with Donald Trump and General Schwarzkopf and some of these other people. And I had a guy come up to me and he said, Mr. Botkin, I love your program. There's only one problem. I don't pay taxes. In fact, I get a refund. He didn't realize he was getting back his own money. In fact, he wasn't even getting it all back. I had several people tell me they didn't pay much in taxes. And finally, I decided to run the numbers because I don't think they realize what they were paying. Here's an individual who makes $50,000 a year. He's a single guy, and that's $50,000 net of all of his exemptions and his deductions. Okay? On $50,000, he pays between federal, state, and Social Security. And I used an average state here. I didn't pick on an expensive state. He pays $12,917 in total taxes. Now, the withholding or estimated tax that he's paying was usually more than what you owe. And the reason for, There's two reasons for that. One, the government wants to make sure they get their money. <laughs> that's one reason. But the second reason is, 
they like the fact that you'll get a refund because you feel better, right? This guy got a $1,568 refund, but he didn't get it all back. He still paid $12,917. If you divide that by 50000 that means 25.8% of what he made went out in taxes. And that doesn't count sales tax or excise tax or gas tax or hotel tax or any of these other taxes, by the way. That's just federal, state, and Social Security. Somebody makes $100,000 a year, net of their deductions, net of their business deductions, is paying 32.4% in taxes, and somebody makes $250,000 a year, look at this, is paying 37.7% in taxes. So you are paying taxes, and you're paying a lot. You may not realize it, but you are. Now, here's another interesting thing. What's the difference between a small business or a home-based business and, say, what a Fortune 500 company can provide their employees in terms of fringe benefits and other things? Answer, none. You get the same tax advantages as what a Fortune 500 company can provide themselves. I have 130 pages in my book, Lower Your Taxes Big Time. Every one of those things applies to every one of you the same way it applies to IBM. Same thing. Here's another interesting thing. What happens if I'm working my inspection business part-time? I'm not doing it full-time. Answer, you get the exact same tax benefits as if you were working full-time. It makes no difference. Here's another big it myth. What happens if I'm not making money yet? Let's say I just started my inspection business and I'm having a loss. Remember I said the government, the government is actually the second biggest bookie in North America. And the reason is really very simple. If you have a loss, you can use that loss against any form of income you have. Interest, dividends, wages, rents, your spouse's earnings, anything. So let's take an example. Let's say your business, your inspection business, you're, you're, you're new in the business, it generates a, a $10,000 loss. Your spouse makes $50,000 in a job. You can use that against their earnings and only pay taxes on $40,000. Let's say the loss exceeds your whole income for the year. You're a single parent and exceeds your whole income. Here's the second way the government subsidizes you. If your loss exceeds your whole income for the year, you can carry back all business losses in the U.S. two years and actually get a refund from the federal and, in most cases, state government for the last two years of taxes that you paid. You actually get a check. Or you can carry forward all business losses up to 20 years and offset the next 20 years of earnings. So you never lose a properly documented business deduction. I want everybody to understand this. In fact, a lot of people think, oh, I've got to make 200000 or 100000 to worry about tax planning. That is not true. Even if you didn't make any money, if you have a loss, it still comes in beneficial. The amount of income you make is immaterial for tax planning to benefit you. I just want to emphasize that. And by the way, I had somebody send me a question here. Will this be recorded? And the answer is yes, we will be recording it. You can get it off the website, I'm sure. Uh, when I turn this back to Ben, he'll mention where you can get it, but it will be recorded, okay? Now, here's another question. Would you rather receive a $17,000 raise every year for the next 10 years or save $10,000 in taxes every year for the next 10 years? Which would you take? Well, if you pick 10000 believe it or not, you're learning. Because by the time you pay federal, state, and Social Security on the 17, you're left with less than $10,000. You know, basically, you probably learned that a penny saved is a penny earned. I bet you heard that saying. And that's not right. A penny saved is somewhere, depending on your tax bracket, between 1.5 and 2 cents earned, believe it or not. I ran, you know, I ran the numbers for the average American. To save, if you if you got, wouldn't it be great if you could get a thousand dollar raise every single month? Well, believe it or not, if you could get eighteen hundred dollars in deductions for the average American, that would equal a thousand dollar raise, the same equivalent. Because by the time you pay taxes on that thousand dollars, versus the taxes you saved on eighteen hundred of deductions, would be almost identical. So eighteen hundred deductions will produce the same after tax benefit as a thousand dollar raise. Believe it or not. Saving money in taxes is very valuable. It's real cash. In fact, in the next 30 minutes, I'm going to show you how to drastically increase your deductions in literally a few minutes a day. I promise. Now, let me ask you a question. You guys use your, your vehicle a tremendous amount for inspection. How would you like to be able to buy gas for the equivalent of 11 cents a gallon? <laughs> would you like that? I mean, you're probably paying 350, 360 a gallon, maybe more. Watch this. There's two ways of riding off a car. One is the actual method, where you take your gas, oil, repairs, insurance, wash, wax, depreciation. The other is the IRS method, which usually isn't as good. Now, the IRS method, so we're going to be conservative here. 
gives you 56 and a half cents a mile on every mile you drive for business. As long as you can prove it. That's the key. You've got to be able to prove that. We're going to get into how to do that. If you use your car for medical or moving, or you take your kids to the doctor, you can claim 14 cents a mile, or 24 cents, 24 cents a mile, round trip, by the way. And if you're not doing that, you're losing money. You move to a different city. I was just talking to Ben. He moved from Pennsylvania to Colorado a few years ago. He should be claiming a 24 cents a mile round trip on this, or single interest, single way. Now, here's something that a lot of people miss. IRS gives you 14 cents a mile for charity. That gets added into your charitable deduction. So I met somebody who's on his, his choir, his local religious school, his religious organization, and he should be claiming 14 cents a mile round trip every time he goes to choir practice or does a performance. I have another friend who's a head of his alumni association, and he should be claiming when he's on, on the director there, and he should be claiming 14 cents a mile every time he goes to a director's meeting or he goes to an alumni meeting. If, he's, if you're not doing this, you're losing money. In my neighborhood, they're always selling Girl Scout cookies. And the moms are driving their daughters around from house to house. Those moms should be claiming 14 cents a mile. If you're not doing this, you're losing money. Okay? Everybody understand that? In Canada, by the way, they have a similar approach. On the first 5,000 kilometers, they get 53 cents a kilometer for business. And anything over 5,000 is 47 cents for business. So let's take an example. How do you get gas for the equivalent of 11 cents a gallon? Watch this. Let's say you drive 20 miles tomorrow for business. IRS gives you this year, this is the 2013 numbers, 56 and a half cents a mile. If you multiply that by 20 business miles, that's $11.30 deduction. But a deduction isn't cash. You have to multiply it by whatever tax bracket you're in. Let's assume you're in the 30% bracket, which is actually fairly low, by the way, between federal, state, and Social Security. 30% times 11.30 results in a $3.39 cash savings in your pocket. That's what that cash that's what that eleven dollar and thirty cent deduction means. That's a three dollar and thirty nine cent cash savings. Here's my point. If you get twenty miles to the gallon and gas costs three fifty to a, a gallon, then you're basically getting three thirty nine from the government, but it's costing you three fifty. You are saving, you're basically buying gas for eleven cents a gallon. You see that? That's why it's a lot cheaper when you get a deduction. Cha cha cha. Here's another bit of hot tip. A lot of times you do personal stuff. You take your kids tutoring, go to football games, go see your mom. That's normally personal. But if a substantial part of that trip was, was business, even though you went to see your mom, most of that mileage becomes business mileage. Everybody understand that? And your mom doesn't have to live where you live. They can live they, you can go visit her, say, in Hawaii. As long as you're, you're, you're doing some inspections or you're going to a, a training meeting, that becomes deductible. Now, here's something that a lot of people miss. This is very interesting. Uh, the IRS method is in lieu of gas, oil, repairs, insurance, wash, wax, depreciation. But you do get sales tax. Even if you use the IRS method, you do get sales tax to the extent you use your car for business, and you can deduct interest to the extent you use your car for business. So if you use your car 80% for business, 80% of the sales tax is deductible. 80% of the interest is business interest. Let's say next year, 80% of that car is used for business, and then 80% of the interest next year is deductible. There are a lot of times people didn't know this. This is very important. I know somebody who filed an amended tax return to get back over $6,000. I'm not exaggerating. This is a big deal. Now, in the American Taxpayer Relief Law, there are some winners here. And let me share with you what's going on here, because this really particularly benefits home inspectors. This is, I, I'd like to call this the Home Inspector Millionaire Relief Act because this is some tremendous benefits for home inspectors. If you buy a qualifying truck, and what is a qualifying truck? It's a vehicle that has a gross vehicle weight of over 6,000 pounds, has a truck chassis, only carries one, no more than one passenger other than the driver next to him, and has at least a six-foot cargo bed, so 6,000 gross vehicle weight or more, more, actually more, truck chassis, at least one, no more than one passenger, and a six-foot cargo area, you can write off 100% of the vehicle business use, 100%, no matter when you bought it. If you buy it, let's say, in September, then you can write off 100% of the vehicle in September, the business use in September. doesn't matter when you buy it. That applies to any qualified truck. In addition, if you buy a new or used SUV, you can elect to write off up to twenty-five thousand dollars of the business use of that SUV. Now, what's a, what's a what's a SUV? 
An SUV is a vehicle that has a gross vehicle weight of over 6,000 pounds, just like a truck, has a truck chassis. But the difference between an SUV and a truck is that the SUV carries passengers behind the driver, whereas the truck doesn't. So if you have a qualified truck, which means it carries passengers, and a gross vehicle weight of over 6,000 pounds, you can elect to write off 25% of the business use of that vehicle. And if it's a new vehicle, you can also claim bonus depreciation of 50% of what's left over. I know someone who bought a brand new Cadillac Escalade for $60,000. He, he used it 90% for business, so 90% of 60 is 54000 He can elect to write off $25,000, that's an SUV, of that, 50, of that 54000 business use. He can then write off 50% of the remaining 29000 plus he can claim regular depreciation. Now, what that means to you, you don't need to be accountants to know this. Here's what it means. You buy yourself a new SUV, you'll write off about 80% of it no matter when you buy it, as long as you have good records. You buy yourself a qualifying truck, you'll be able to write off 100% of the, of the vehicle business use. So qualifying trucks and SUVs are the big winners under the American Taxpayer Relief Law. Now, here's another big winner. Entertainment. And both in the United States, it says you can deduct 50% of your meals, in fact, it's true in Canada too, and 50% of your entertainment for you and your prospect. The question is, who are your potential clients? Are your best friends potential clients? Can they buy a home and need an inspection? Sure. How about your next-door neighbor? Sure. How about adult family members? Sure. In fact, I've never known two inspectors get together and not talk business. So let me ask you a question. I, 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 if that's the case, how can you ever have a non-deductible lunch with someone? You can't. And if you're not writing off almost every meal you have with someone, you are losing money because almost everyone can be a, pros a legitimate prospect. In fact, let me emphasize something here. A lot of times people get scared of entertainment. They say, wait a minute, you mean to tell me I mean, this is allowed? I mean, this, this is going to trigger an audit? IRS wants you to entertain. Here's why. Let me ask you a question. You, you've probably seen the Super Bowl. On the Super Bowl, they have these ads that sell for, what, a million dollars a minute? I think you'll agree with me, but the people who do the ads know that not everyone is going to buy their product. They know that. You're not going to put a million dollars a minute into the Super Bowl. Your form of advertising is word-of-mouth advertising and viral advertising, recommendations. That's how inspectors get their business. So it pays to advertise in two ways. One, you're promoting your business in pursuit of a profit. And number two, you are offering proof that you're running your business like a business. That's one of the indicia. So the government wants you to entertain. So the bottom line, and that's the bottom line, and word-of-mouth advertising. Now, something I want you to write down is called associated entertainment. You probably never heard about this. There's an equal sign. This is what it says in the Internal Revenue Code, by the way. I want you to write down the word fun, fun. See, we don't need better tax laws. We, need, we just need better explanations. This is where you're going to a movie. This is where you're going to play golf. This is where you're going to a football game. And you can deduct that fund. So you're having twice as much fun. Get that 50 to, to, to 20, 20 to 53 percent rebate. The government says that you can write off 50 percent of your fund as well as 50 percent of your prospects fund if, and this is the IRS talking, not Sandy Botkin talking, if you talk business within the same 24-hour day as the fund. Does that give you enough time? <laughs> That's the point. Now here's my here's the bottom line. How does the government prove? that you talk business during the same 24-hour day. And, and do they have that burden of proof, or do you have that burden of proof? And, and the answer is we do. And how do we prove it? From our tax organizer or tax tracker. Is everybody kind of getting the drift? You know, I get questions asked all, I mean, when I go on the radio all the time or I go on TV, and they say, what's the one thing that people should keep? They have to keep anything to bulletproof their records. And the answer is a tax tracker. I can't emphasize how important that is. It, it'll keep the government off your back. In fact, they'll be backing you instead of off your back, on your back, I should say. Uh, you know, you all have homeowner's insurance probably because why? You don't use it every day because if your house burns down, it's a catastrophe you, if you don't have it. You have car insurance. Why? Because you get into an accident and you don't have car insurance. That's a catastrophe. This is audit insurance. This keeps the government off your back and prevents huge penalties from closing you down. The only difference is unlike homeowners and car, this one pays you every single year, and it pays you very well, by the way. Now, let's talk about a home office. I'll bet you heard that if you claim a home office, it isn't worth it, and you'll get audited. Well, I'm here to tell you that if you don't have a home office deduction and you're eligible, you are crazy. You really are. In fact, in 1999, I bet you didn't know this, Congress liberalized the home office rules. 
<laughs> they made it easier for self-employed people to claim it. And let me give you a background of how beneficial a home office can be. Let's assume this is your house, or you're renting an apartment like this, and one bedroom is used for business. And we're going to assume that approximately one-eighth of the home is used for business. And again, I'm just picking a number. In your house, it may be more than an eighth, it may be less. I'm just picking a number. Now, when, you use, when, you, when I say one-eighth is used for business, what is the meaning of that? That means that one-eighth of the things that wouldn't be deductible now become business deductions. So, for example, one-eighth of the utilities become deductible. Before, you weren't deducting the utilities. Without a home office, you'd get no deduction. But with a home office, now you can deduct some of those utilities. One-eighth of the interest becomes business interest. And you might be thinking, well, wait a minute. Can't we deduct interest on a home? Yes, but it's an itemized deduction. Here, one-eighth of that becomes a business deduction to help save some Social Security and Medicare taxes. The other seven-eighths you can itemize. One-eighth of the property tax becomes business taxes. One-eighth of the house can be depreciated. That's, by the way, worth thousands. I think I ran the numbers on a $300,000 house. That's like $9,000. I mean, it's huge. When it, people ask me, what if I don't, not, let's say I don't own a house. I'm renting. No problem. One-eighth of the rent in this example will be deductible. One-eighth of the maid service. One-eighth of the alarm service. One-eighth of the lawn care. One-eighth of the snow removal. One-eighth of the repairs, insurance. This is a big deal, folks. It really does add up and is well worth taking. Now, here's another example. Uh, how, how would you like, to, you know, uh, people ask me over time, can I deduct tuition and weddings for my daughter and cars for my kids and things like that? And the answer is no. But despite what I just said, how would you like to be able to deduct everything I just said, the equivalent of it, of tuition and weddings and cars for kids, if it were blessed by the government? Would you like that? There are five ways to do it. I'm going to give you one out of the five. As I said, tuition, room and board, cars, weddings, they're not deductible. But if you were to hire your kid in your business and pay them a reasonable wage and they keep timesheets showing what they did, that wage becomes deductible. And if they use that money to pay for their own college, their own wedding, their own room and board down the road, aren't you in essence getting a deduction for it? It's the same money. But in one case, you went from non-deductible tuition to deductible wages. Same money. And even better, if you hire a kid in a self-employed business and they're under 18, there's no Social Security, no FICA. And also, regardless of age, the first $6,100 they earn is income tax-free. Why? Because you get a deduction on your tax return, but they get, and they get taxed on it, but they get a standard deduction on their own tax return against wages. Result, you get a deduction, they get that money tax-free. You know, let me ask you something. If you were given, like, what is, what is gold now, 1,700 an ounce? If you were given three and a half ounces of gold, would you, what would you do with it? Would you pick it up? Would you sell it? You're given that every year from the government. It's called a standard deduction. And your kid, the way you take advantage of it is you hire your kids or grandkids, and they claim that standard deduction on their own tax return. And that's in addition to their exemption. You can also claim them as an exemption, by the way. This is a big deal, folks. I, let me give you an example of how, this, how I did this in my life because I really walked the walk. My daughter majored in digital design, which is kind of like web design with some other stuff. At the end of her sophomore year, I needed a new website, and I wanted a bunch of bells and whistles, and I got a quote from a major web company, which was a lot of money. So I asked my daughter, I said, look, this is what I want to have done. Can you do this? And she said, yeah, I can do it. So I paid her something less than what the company char would have charged me, and she designed my website. The amount I was able to pay her covered two years of college tuition, two years of room and board. It covered her for books. And she had extra money left over. I saved tens of thousands of dollars on taxes. If you're not doing this, it's costing you money. Okay? That's the point. Now, let me give you a good home inspector example. Joe. Joe has the following expenses. Now, we're going to assume Joe is in the 33% tax bracket, which is the average for most Americans. Let's assume he spends $120 on cell phone. He uses it 90% for business, so his deduction is $108. But your cash, is you have to multiply that by whatever tax bracket you're in. He's been in the 33% bracket. That results in $35.64 in cash. We're going to assume he spends $200 a month for home mortgage interest or, or just rent. If he uses his house 20% for business, that's a $400 deduction. In the 33% bracket, that's $132 in cash. We're going to assume he spends $400 in utilities. If 20% of that is business, that's an $80 deduction. That's another $26 in cash. Joe likes to go out a lot, 
So he spends two hundred dollars in meals and two hundred dollars for entertaining. That's four hundred a month. By the way, I've had people come up to me and say, Sandy, Mr. Botkin, I can do this in a day. I can spend that. This is four hundred in a month. These are conservative numbers. So what I'm quoting you are conservative approaches here. In the United States, you can deduct fifty percent of your meal deduction and fifty percent of your fun. So at that four hundred dollars, they get a hundred dollars each. Hundred of meals, hundred in fun. In the thirty-three percent bracket. That translates into $66 of meals and entertainment. And he drives 200 miles a month for business. That's seven miles a day. Now, I know many of you are putting on much more than this. I am using a conservative approach here. At the 56 and a half cent a mile, that's $113 in deduction. As I said, for many of you, this is going to be double and triple this. In the 33% bracket, that's $37 a month. My point is these six deductions are generating in cash – $297 a month, a month, folks, and this is only six deductions, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, there are all kinds of things you can do, such as how to write up the equivalent of your kids' education and weddings. There are five ways. I just covered one briefly. How would you like to write off not your 100% of your medical expense? Don't worry, with no threshold, as a business expense. Would you like that? I know someone who wrote off $9,000 of braces that way as a business expense. How to deduct your season tickets and fun. And one of my favorite things, how to get a double deduction for your business equipment, including cars. How would you like to write all those things off twice? How to turn vacations into a tax-deductible event almost anywhere you go. How to create a retirement plan that beats any government plan. How to save 40% of your Social Security and 80% and of your capital gains taxes approximately. How would you like to do that? And much, much more. There's just all kinds of things you can do. I mean, if you're not taking advantage of these things, you are losing money. That's really the bottom line here. Now, how do you stay compliant? That's really the important point. First of all, you have to start keeping meticulous records. And secondly, you've got to learn more about tax deductions because you don't know what you don't know. If you don't have good records, then you're in trouble because if you get audited, you're going to not maximizing your savings, and you could be hit with very substantial penalties that could, really could close you down. I mean, it's very, very important. Here's an example of, of a typical tax organizer that I used to represent many years ago. It's a paper version. The advantage of this, it has all the tax questions that IRS requires right in front of you 365 days a year. So you, you avoid procrastination. So for who? Here it is. Yeah, and you have the, if when you entertain, by the way, you need six things. Who, what, where, when, why, and how much. So for who? Nick and Carol Hillman. These are real people. What was a meal? Where? We went to Palm Restaurant. Then we went to the Ford's Theater to have fun. When? The date didn't appear on the diary, but it's, it, it's, it's on there. It shouldn't appear on the photograph. Why? I asked for referral. You've got to be very specific, by the way. Do not just say prospect or goodwill. You've got to be specific. Try to get a referral. Talked about a home inspection. Talked about problems. Whatever. Why? And I even put the name in. And finally, how much? $200. By doing this, you will never have to worry about an IRS audit again. How will that feel? Have that peace of mind of never having to worry about an IRS audit again because your records will be in great shape. And if you do any audit, they won't get much or anything. That's the important point. This will make you bulletproof. Now, another big problem is lost and faded receipts. This is an actual example of a receipt that I have. And by the way, this is not your eyes. This is really what, what my receipt looks like. This is only a year and a half old. A lot of receipts are on thermally treated paper. So what's happened is a lot of these things fading. So people don't get a deduction. If I have to support my deduction with this, I'm out of luck. I would be disallowed. And a lot of people think, well, what about credit cards? Don't they work? Think again, because you need more information than the credit card provides. Because in tax law, and this is the important point, you are guilty until you prove your innocence. You have to prove all your deductions were business-related, and you are following the rules. How do you do this? I have worked for six years. I wanted to do something that was simple and easy. One thing I can do is simple and easy. I think anybody can do that. And I developed what is called TaxBot, which I promise you is the fastest and easiest way to maximize your savings. TaxBot works on the iPhone, the iPad, the Android, the Droid tablet, and the web. The only thing it doesn't work on is in the BlackBerry. Now, the way it works is a fusion of tracking tools and education that I promise you will save you thousands of dollars a year in under two minutes a day. No more than that. But the point is you will instantly store receipts by snapping photos of the receipts, 
answering simple questions and bulletproof you against even the smartest IRS auditor. Now, the way TaxBot works is here's a good example. It's two buttons, and one is add expense, and the other one is add meals. It's that simple. It's all you do. And for add expense, let's say I have an entertainment expense. So I click on meals. And sure enough, it'll give me a whole set of categories of meals. I'm writing them off. And by the way, these things are fully um, customizable and editable on the web. You can change this, anything you want. You can add things if you forgot things. Not a problem. The minute you put in meals, here's what you're going to see. All six questions pop up automatically. That eliminates procrastination. So for the meals, it's automatically there. You type in. It asks for referrals. How much? You put in the amount. Where'd you go? Chili's. When? The date is automatically put in there. All you put in is who, and you are bulletproof. Now, I want you to notice something. There's something that says entity there. TaxSpot works on up to three different businesses and three different vehicles simultaneously. So if you have multiple businesses, you can use TaxSpot for the multiple businesses with one account. It's like having three TaxSpots all in one. Now, the second thing is TaxBot has an integrated camera for receipts, so you don't have those things fading. This is a big deal. You can attach the receipt by taking a picture of it. You, you click on Attach Receipt, and sure enough, what will happen is it will take a picture and it will store it right on the web, so you never have to worry about losing the information, even if you lose your phone. Third thing. TaxBot has an integrated mileage tracker with a GPS system, and you do a lot of driving. This one is a killer. You're going to love this. What you do is you turn on TaxBot when you start your day. You'll say, and it'll say, start mileage tracking. And it'll ask you, do you want to turn on the tracking? You'll say, yes. Now you'll see a pin. When you get to your location, you either have a choice. You can either stop the mileage tracking or press lap. Lap is like the same thing, but it assumes you're going to keep going. You're going to do another business stop. That's what lap does. It takes a picture of where you are. The minute you press one of those two buttons, here's what happens. The mileage is automatically input into TaxBot. The beginning address of where you start a TaxBot automatically starts off. The ending address automatically starts off, it puts in there. The date is automatically there. If you're doing multiple trips, just turn off round trip, and you'll, you can do each trip. All you put in is why. That's it, which you have to do. You have to put the business purpose. Home inspection with Sandy Botkin or home inspection, or talked about with the financial planner, whatever it is, and you are bulletproof. It's that simple. You click save, and it's all stored, summarized for you, by the way, between business and personal mileage, so you know where your business uh, allocation is. I mean, this is really, really brilliant, I think. Also, TaxBot integrates with any bank account or credit card. So let's put it this way. You register a credit card or a bank account. TaxBot will search, the, the, when you're, as you're charging things, or as you write a check, it will look at your accounts, Compare it to what's in TaxBot. If it's not there, when you go on the TaxBot website, which I recommend about once a week or two, it will ask you, hey, here's a list of expenses that don't seem to be logged into TaxBot. You want to add it. That will give you absolute thorough reports. They're fully downloadable. You get all kinds of graphs with the reports. I mean, it's really quite interesting. The point is TaxBot will eliminate uh, time and save you a tremendous amount of time. And by the way, tons of it, too, and eliminate paperwork. You get a secure web portal in the cloud. You, snap, you track it, we store it. The records are stored with bank level security according to IRS standards. And by the way, I want to emphasize something. IRS came out with a ruling that digital documentation is absolutely compliant. So um, my programs like TaxBot will be absolutely compliant. The, you can edit the records, as I mentioned. They are fully, you can download the reports into a memory stick for your accountant or just download the printed reports. You never have to worry about losing the information because it's in the web. It's in the cloud. By the way, um, TaxBot is sort of like a BMW. There's more under the hood than it appears. For example, many companies will tell you they store records. TaxBot stores it in several different locations in several different cities. So your receipts, your records, your mileage logs are all stored securely in a dynamic web portal that you have access to 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can even integrate it with an appointment tool, any appointment book you want, and even do a budget with it. Here, here's something that's even more interesting. In the front of TaxBot, it will generate in real time how much you're saving in deductions. Look at this. This, uh, this is my partner's iPhone. He generated $15,000, almost $69, as of August 20th. I mean, that's just unbelievable. I mean, it really does generate a huge, huge – this has gotten tremendous publicity and tremendous ratings. 
you also get, in addition to all of this, a lot of tax training on demand. You get 40 videos that I've done, three to five minute videos on a whole variety of topics. There's 318 blogs on all kinds of things. Uh, tax tips on the latest tax law that has come into play. Uh, some of the latest scams that have gone on in North America. I, not just tax, but financial too. I have, I have a blog on how to evaluate nursing homes for parents. Um, how to get in-state tuition for out-of-state students, and a lot more. I mean, there's just tremendous amount of information on TaxBot that's going to put thousands in your pocket. And by the way, here are some, I'm, I'm going to show you something. TaxBot is literally pennies a day. Or for pennies a day, this person generated $7,528. These are actual testimonials of what they had in front of TaxBot. I even have the name and where they're from. In three months, this person generated $7,528 in deductions. Look at this. This person generated $15,122 in six months. One of this guy is smiling. And this guy, what's his name, David Hickson, $42,759 in front of tax spot in five months. Okay? How's that? For pennies a day, that's, that's, you're not going to get a return like that. You know, I bet many of you thought you weren't overpaying your taxes. It made me ign ignorance is bliss, but i got to tell you something. It's very, very costly. So you have a choice. You can spend two minutes a day complaining about your taxes, which many do, or the same two minutes a day reducing them. One will cost you aggravation and money. The other will make you a lot of cash and bring you peace of mind of not having to worry about an IRS audit. And you'll get a great return on taxes, probably the best return you'll ever see. Now, how do you take advantage of TaxBot and how much is it? Normally, TaxBot is $19.99 a month, but there's a special discount that the association has negotiated for you. It is only $9.99 a month, and this is not one of these one-month or two-month deals that you say, this is it, $9.99 a month. It's 50% off, okay? Hopefully, I've convinced you of the absolute horrible mistake of overpaying your taxes, and I apologize to anyone who doesn't get it because you will pay a lot more than those that do. To take advantage of tax bond, and by the way, this has a limited number. We're limiting this to 100 people. That's it because it compromises our pricing. Go to www.nachi.taxbot.com. That's nachi.taxbot.com. And I promise it'll put thousands of dollars in your pocket. In fact, here's an interesting point. You know, when is gambling not gambling? And that's when you can't possibly lose. Remember I told you, I said this very quickly, that the government is the second biggest bookie in North America because they're betting on your business success. Well, guess who the number one bookie is? Me. And here's why. Have you ever heard of a bookie that offers you a bet that you not only can't lose, but you have to win 20 times your bet or you get your money back? That's 20 to 1 odds, folks. What's that, 2,000% rate of return? The fact that tax spot is so simple and easy, and we've had so many testimonials on this, that get, lets me make this incredible bet. We're going to make it a three-fold bet. One, tax spot must produce a dollar a second in tax deductions for every second you use it. It's a dollar a second. Number two. TaxBot must track all your deductions, including your mileage, in less than two minutes a day. And number three, TaxBot must produce a minimum of 20 times its monthly cost in tax deductions. What's that, 2,000% rate of return? If in any month you feel you haven't won in this area, if any part of the bet, we will refund your money for that month and cancel your TaxBot service immediately. No questions asked. There's no contract here. That's it, and I will tell you. No, let me tell you. For nine ninety nine a month to generate fifteen thousand in five months, what that what that guy do forty two thousand in five months? I mean, this is the best deal in town, and it's not even nine ninety nine by the way, because you get that twenty to fifty three percent rebate. It's only about five eighty out of pockets. What is that? Nineteen cents a day, All right? Nineteen cents a day after taxes. You know, tax spot is like a tax refund policy. It'll help you make sure you get the full financial benefit of all the great tax laws the government is trying hard to grant you as a business owner. And I'm going to give you an extra benefit as a bonus. You sign up today, we're going to send you a link. If you give this link to your friends or family or other people you know and they sign up, we will actually, and they'll get the same price, number one, and number two, you will get a free month for sharing it. I know someone was over two years of free tax bots. To take advantage of it, go to www.nachi.taxbot.com. Again, it is going to be limited to about 100 people, and then we shut it off. That's it. So the first 100 will get it. So I encourage you to do this as soon as possible. Okay? All right. What I'm going to do is hopefully – by the way, I want to mention that TaxBot is now being used by billion-dollar corporations 
and tens of thousands of small business owners across the U.S. and Canada. So I encourage you to join our team, and we're going to make your life a lot less taxing forever. All right, let me turn this back over to Ben. If he has any questions, uh, he'll be able to uh, read them over to me. Thank you, Sandy. That was really amazing. Thank you very much for that presentation. And I am going to sign up for TaxBot tonight, for sure. Um, we are at um, about um, the end of our program, but I do have for you, Sandy, one question. Um, okay. If a lot of our members are um, sole proprietors, there's one inspector in the business, and their spouse is the office manager. Now, are you saying that tomorrow night, that home inspector can take out his wife to dinner on a date. And if they talk about business, that is a, an opportunity? No. They, the, if they, and this is in tax spot, by the way. Going out alone with your spouse is the one exception that you cannot do. Same thing is true when you're, if you're single, going out with your significant other, you cannot do. That's, however, you know, there's an old saying in Washington, D.C., where I live, where there's a will, there's a lawyer. IRS says that if you go out with another couple, you may always bring your spouse or significant other to keep the other person busy while you're talking about inspection needs and inspection reports. So you may, whenever you entertain another couple, you may always bring your spouse or significant other. Same thing holds true if the other couple brings their kids. If you won't want the kids to interfere in the conversation, you can bring either your spouse or your kids to keep their kids busy. And how does IRS know if you're entertaining another couple? They look in your tax spot. That's how they know. And by the way, I get people asking me all the time, you mean to tell me that the government will actually believe everything I say in tax spot? Yep. They will believe everything you say. Unless they can show fraud, they must accept what you put in your tax tracker. It's absolutely required by regulations. Uh, my, I also, there was one question here that I wanted to address. He I said, I have an iPhone and my wife has a, a droid. Can we use tax spot? Yes. You can use it on separate devices with one account. It doesn't matter. I have that situation in my house. So it works on separate devices, even on the same account. Well, wonderful, Sandy. Um, thank you, everybody, for attending. And um, there is the URL. Um, it's natchi.taxbot.com. And our contact information, if you have any questions, um, type them in or send them to Terry or I, and we will try to attend to them. And um, thank you, everybody, for attending. Sandy, thank you very much. My pleasure. Bye, everybody.